Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl and I. And your boy, Stanley. All right, we coming in with Green Leaf. Yeah. I just finished <coughs> watching it. <coughs> I got a lot of skit to say. Damn. So y'all buckle up, because I'm about to give it to you. Let's go ahead and do the YouTube thing. If you are not a family member, which means that you haven't hit that subscribe button, I don't yeah. know why you keep coming over here and don't at least knock on the door and let us know that you over here. You know what I mean? Exactly. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. You over here. It's free now. Yeah. It will go up at some point because I'm going to start charging you all for my services. Go ahead and rate the video. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Because by this time, you've already been counted. So exactly. it don't even matter. Yeah. Okay. Chain of Command. Lord have yeah. mercy. All right. We will skip to all the juicy stuff. We're going to continue the conversation down in the comment section. Exactly. Bishop. Don't decide to take his hard parts down there to the county or the city, depending on where they live at, and sign up to get them papers. What you do that for? So the papers got delivered to the house. The guy doing may gave the papers to Lady May and why Gigi of all people had to be sitting at the table <laughs> when the papers came. Now body expression on Lady May face, you can tell that it's something that she did wasn't expecting. She did not want to receive. So Grace was like, hold on, you know what's going on mama, you all right. After the <laughs> hell you put me through? You better be glad you're family. That's the only reason you still in this house. I'm surprised she didn't blame her for getting the goddamn pay. <laughs> okay. And we're we gonna we're gonna put a pin in that right here because I said <laughs> what was this all about? Now the same token I'm sitting here thinking about what happened last week. You took a toll this man. Yeah. That as soon as this skit is over, I'm divorcing your pig. black. Hey. A. Uh huh. But now that he don't kind of beat you to your point, he done dropped the dime on you before you dropped the dime on him. Now you can't handle it, though. Okay. Huh? But anyway, so we see Bishop over at the church because you know the show must go on. He tiptoed across the marble floors that Rick Ross would say, <laughs> looking in the office because he afraid that he gonna run up into First Lady May. So what you ain't gonna do, Bishop, is pull a boss move. And then start acting like, like a punk. Like a pussycat. Okay, this is what we're going to do. So, he didn't run into First Lady May. What he did run into was his daughter, Charity. She was waiting for him in the office. The Karim was like, you know what? <laughs> First Lady ain't in there, but your daughter is. So, he gets in there. Hmm. Okay, Charity is on her. Well, I'm not going on tour. I'm not going to say no more. I've been delivered. Um... I want to preach that. I want to preach. Daddy, I want to preach. He said, hold on, what? <laughs> See, what we not going to do is act like preaching is a plan B. Yeah, this your fallback plan. Yeah. Either you call to this or you not. And I said, Charity, let me go ahead and, and, and put you up on some game real quick. What you not going to do is show up in your Ariana Grande dress <laughs> that she wore over there to reef for some fume. I ain't even going to say what I'm going to say. Lord have What I'm thinking. And then tell your daddy you got a call to preach. Huh? Yeah, he ain't that dumb. He, he, he ain't that dumb. He already knows something didn't go right. Yeah. He already know, yeah. He already know that, that your plan, how all of a sudden, that's your passion. Now all of a sudden, you don't want to sing no more. Come on now. Now she had really good points and she was like, you know, singing is a form of ministry to bring. We got all that, but either you oh, are anointed to sing. Or you know. anointed to preach. Now, you can exactly. be anointed to be both. Yeah. Yes, you can. But in church's case, Daddy said, <coughs> this ain't your fallback plan. Yeah, because, you know, it sounded like he had already heard her preach. He said years ago. <laughs> years ago. <laughs> so, if you weren't doing good years ago, what makes you think you can do good now and just start now? And you ain't been um, elevating and practicing your gifts. Exactly. Stretching yourself. So, go and continue to sing. So... Moving forward with Charity, Charity goes over there because evidently she did drop the baby off over there with um, Kevin and them. And I'm saying and them because when she went over there to pick her baby up, Kevin was nowhere to be found. Yeah, he, he stepped on out to run, run a couple of errands. Aaron opened the door with the baby. Okay, now I'm about to get into Kevin because y'all know I've been avoiding 
really speaking about how I really feel about this whole Kevin thing. Hmm. And I'm going to approach this sis. A whole bunch of y'all watch our um our, our Queen Sugar reviews too. And everybody swear them down. We, we, we hard on Dollar because she a female. But I'm about to be hard on this motherfucker right here. Uh oh. Okay, Kevin. Watch out, Kevin. We understand that you went through something. You started, you know, you decided to live your truth. And that's okay by me. So you needed a little space. But in you needing that little bit of space, you did abandon your position as father mm -hmm. until you felt like you were together enough to come back into this little boy life. So when you came back into this life, now you want to do all these boss moves. You want to say, oh, you're not taking my son here. You're not taking my son there. You need to leave my son with me while you go on tour. Let's go ahead and pump the brakes on that. Just like I told Dollar, I'm going to tell you, you need to ease back into that baby's life. Even though it was a short period of time. Because what you're not going to do is show all this instability. Mm -hmm. Then come back and want everybody to take you um, serious. No, we're mm -hmm. not doing that. We're not playing with kids' lives over here. Exactly. And this is the part that pissed me off. That solidified how I really felt. Because you can't even have your son for a little bit of time on your own. Without soliciting someone else's help. To take care of. Charity ain't cool with this dude right now. Nah. And you know she ain't cool with him. But yet, you leave the baby with him. I would have took it better if, if Aaron had opened the door and said, Kevin and the baby went out to the store real quick. Exactly. But you mean to tell me, just because you're comfortable with this dude, that mean that everybody else would... So nah. that mean that somebody else coming to your life next week, my child will be around, that, around him too? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep, you bucked that one up right so there, Kevin. It up. Yeah, you bucked that up. So now that Charity is looking, getting a little... Little glimpse into what Kevin's life looks like now because Aaron went ahead and told her, Okay, we wanted to tell you this together, but I got a job here, so I ain't going nowhere. Okay, so Charity's like, Okay, in her mind, as Mike B would say, he's really moved on with his life and he's actually establishing some things in his life while I'm over here. Basically, I don't cancel the tour, uh huh, ain't doing skit, got to move back in the house with mom and dad and them, and they going through yep. skit. With this baby. So we see her in the car. And I said, I know she ain't. So I you know going? she ain't. I actually thought she was going home. She was driving a little too god no alone. Yeah. This wench drove CM miles to Nashville to pop up on Jabari, who she had called earlier. And he was real short with her. And hung up on her. Just and like he did the first time. And Stella already said, he don't got the draws. He don't got his Tamala man singles out of you. Yep. He don't move down to yeah, the next. Yeah, yeah, he don't want you no more. Well, when she popped up on him, he had already, he's already showing his affections to someone else. To and, a new chick. And he was pissed mm -hmm. that Charity was even there. Yep. Even baby Nathan was gritting him up and down like, what the hell's going on here? Yeah, I ain't supposed to even be here. Jabari basically told her, look, this chick over here, she has a contract with me now, so this is what I need to deal with. I, you know, that's something that you didn't do. You bailed out on me. Yeah. Um, I don't want you here. You need to go home. And she was sitting there begging this man for her position, not only in his life, but her position back in his life. In, I mean, on the choir. On, yeah. On, in the group. He told her to go home. And she was like, they don't want me there either. He said, well, I don't want you here either. It's like, oh. <laughs> huh. I, I tried to tell you. Tried to tell you. That wouldn't, was a, you he, he wouldn't listen. Kevin 2.0. Yeah, he did not you, want you. You jumped from the pot to the fry pan. He just needed your gift. Work you off a little piece every now and then. And then you wouldn't come through what he needed you for. He threw you down the lake. <laughs> he threw you just, away. Just, just like they did Moses. <laughs> Sent him on down the river. So <laughs> you on the river back to your mom and your dad. Yep. So <clears throat> at some point we saw that Bishop had ran into Gigi. Gigi had let Bishop know basically what you sent was delivered. Because mama got something at the table this morning, went crazy, ran up out the house, <clears throat> and I ain't seen her since. Okay, so now he knows that she got what he sent for her. Okay. Yep. So then we see first lady. 
she's over there speaking to an attorney basically telling the attorney my husband is a preacher uh, he has a flock of four thousand um he said with my sister multiple times you know she's selling this story right yeah she ain't talking nothing to what she did no no nah. said that he got this girl half her age and all <laughs> she want was due to her then asked the, <laughs> the attorney are you a christian she said no you gonna be glad i ain't and going you gonna be there. glad i'm not after i'm done with him but she said, let me go ahead and give you this warning here. So first lady thought she knew what this lady was going to say to her, but she wasn't ready for what she was about to say to her. Um, and it's funny, I told Stella, I just had a conversation with a first lady last night, and she basically told me the same skit that the lawyer just told. And she was like, baby, it's some skit. She said, listen, all first ladies think that they want what's due to them, but they're not going to get what's due to them. Mm -hmm. Because once the pastor is done with you, it's over for you. Party's over. Party's over. Cinderella. She called her Cinderella. <laughs> All those people that you held their hand, prayed with them, held their babies down, went to the hospital, visit their mama, mm -hmm. ate food from their table, they no longer gonna, gonna buck with you no more. Nope. So, um, you are know. you ready for this or no? And that's exactly what that first lady had told me last night. She was like, after all of these people I done nurtured, don't cried with, been there with, had one-on-one -on -one talks with, don't know nothing buck with me. I said, what are you doing? Yeah. That's messed up. That's messed up. Yeah. That's but, the truth. Whew. I said, okay, first lady, I, I, I don't know if you were ready for this. And evidently she wasn't ready for this because the next thing we know, first lady don't ended up at this Jew joint. And at first I said, is she going to look for Mavis? That's what I thought, but I remember that Mavis don't got that place no more. I knew she had that place no more, but that looked like a Mavis-esque place. Like, okay. Like, she somewhere just... that she could be doing some covers. Oh, okay. Getting her Chrisette Michelle on or something yeah. like that. But no, she gets in there because she is ready to get blind lit. Yeah. Every day we lit, you be talking skit. <laughs> remember, I was broke and you be getting rich. <laughs> First lady asked the bartender, hey, I need, I don't even know what the drink was because they stopped selling and serving. Oh, I know those. what it was. What was it? It was some Christmas brown liquor with some nutmeg in it. They stopped serving those after Jesus <laughs> went to the cross. <laughs> he said, I, we, I ain't made one of them in yeah. Yale. He said he ain't made near one of them since the crucifixion. <laughs> And he said, I'm, he said, I like a woman that knows what she wants because you even know how to make it. Basically, he said, thank you for telling me how to make it because I don't know how to make that skit. Man, she was throwing them bounces back, boy, one after another. Back, 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 back. And the whole thing, I was like, hang over, hang over, hang over, hang over, hang over. I was like, first lady, how you going to get home? Yeah. Like, what is really happening? I mean, she at the table having a good old time all to herself. She done ordered her, it looked like a fish plate. Uh-huh, yep. Don't invite some ladies over there to talk smack with her too. And then this is when we actually get to hear a little bit of First Lady's backstory. Yeah. Her and um Maxine Patterson. They were <laughs> supposed to go to Howard University to study, you know, go to the School of Divinity. And the day before they were gonna go, they sat at that bar, <laughs> basically got <laughs> drunk before they get in life to the Lord. <laughs> and she decided to stay back because she was in love with James, Bishop Lester Wallace. And Maxine went on up there to a thing and she became this big preacher that everybody knows. And basically First Lady was like, I put my life on hold for love. And now that that's dissolving, what do I have? Mm -hmm. Other than living the dream or pushing the dream that someone else had. I said, ooh. Sound a little, little bit like Hollywood, huh? Yeah. yeah! Just like Hollywood, put your dreams on hold so you can have somebody else out. But at the same time, it still seemed like she still got, she got something where she want. You know, the bishop did give her a good life. You know, even though you was messing around with Lionel. <laughs> <laughs> but he still made sure you had some money in your pocket, made sure you look good, gave you a nice house. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, it wasn't without benefits. Yeah, so it came with some benefits. But I guess at the end of the day, if you ain't living your dream, you still die. Even though you got it all. Mm. So first lady, she's so drunk. I said, I said, thank you for having a responsible person in this guy doing seem right here because she told the guy, she said, that little hotel over there, how is it? Cause I don't do bugs. 
He said, it ain't going to be quite to your standards, but at least it's clean. It's clean. So she went ahead and got her room over there. But she had called Sophia because, remember, she was supposed to have dinner with Sophia that same night. Mm -hmm. Called Sophia, talked to her, but Bishop is over at the house. She hung the hell up on Bishop. He <laughs> trying to talk to her, but he trying to play it off so that Sophia don't know that grandma don't hung up on my granddaddy over here. Well, you know, I actually thought old bartender was going to try to roll up on old uh, sister made out. I thought something was going to yeah. happen to her while she was drunk like yeah, that. Yeah, I thought he was going to try to sneak up over that hotel and knock on the door. Well, who'd have said it didn't? We didn't see the whole scene. Yeah. But she went over there to that hotel. The TV still had a butt on it. I said, okay, first lady. And she ain't had no hangover the next morning either. Yeah, because she walked there all face all made up. She was ready to go. I said, uh-oh. She ready to go. She ready, she ready for she, war now. Yeah, she ready to go confront the bishop now. Well, come find out in between this time, Bishop rolled over there at Jacob's and told Jacob. Was he at the church? Yeah, over at the church. Yeah, the church. Told Jacob, listen, I know what kind of woman your mother is. So I felt like in order to get her out of her bullheaded ways, I had to reach down way deep and do something that was going to get her attention. But I bucked up. Yeah. I filed for divorce. And Jacob was like, you did what? You did what? <laughs> and he knows at this point, I, I, I don't buck this up. Look, what I thought I was dealing with, I'm not really dealing with. Because I thought she was going to come crawling back. It was like, James, you know. Maybe I overreacted, this, that, and the third. But no. no, you got the opposite of what nah, you thought you were You don't with. do that, man. You don't play with no black women like that. I said, it's so funny to me how this season, everybody going to Jacob to kind of talk about their problems, fix their problems. Yeah, back then they didn't want them. Now they hot. Now they, they all, all on it. it. Yeah. Okay. So, Keisha Cole Skank. Let's talk about her. She went ahead and let Jacob know, listen, there has been some money coming up short in the offerings on first shift. <laughs> and um, I have a list of names of all the ushers that's been on first shift. I say, oh, And basically, yeah. without saying, your daughter's on every one of them shifts <laughs> that the money be coming up missing. And the first thing I was like, well, I only saw her still once, so... Okay, you know, there could have been a fluke in you the know, numbers or whatnot. Yeah. Well, come find out, door, the weed is flowing. But see, see. Zora, the weed is flowing. See, she, she one of them stupid thieves, see, right? Here. Yeah. How you gonna slit open the envelope and put it back in the bucket? At least take the loose bit, like we see yeah. you the first time. Exactly. Take the whole envelope if you're gonna steal it. <laughs> God, don't it? <laughs> I ain't trying to tell nobody to go to church and they ain't co-signing and stealing money out of the offering plate. But if you decide to do it, do it right. Do it right that it won't lead back to you. Well, Jacob told Clarissa about it. Was like, you know, I think Zora is stealing the money. And she was like, nah. she having a hard time, but a thief, that ain't nah. who our daughter is, man. Cut the skin. This ain't, nah. Nah, she might be crazy, but she ain't, she ain't a Judas, man. So... This is what Jacob decided to do. And I, I, I'm glad that he did it because it shows, it shows you something. That sometimes you just got to let the guilty party reveal themselves. So yeah, he had yeah. a meeting with all of the ushers. And he was telling them how good of a job that they were doing. You know, how he appreciated everything they did. And he said, don't think for a second. I don't see what you're doing. The whole time Zora's like this. Mm-hmm. Yep. Even when they said amen, she couldn't even say it. He was, <laughs> she like, was like, hey yeah, man, got you. Uh huh. He came home later on that night and went through all of her skit. And she was talking about make him stop going through my my stuff like your your stuff. Uh, your stuff. I don't see you paying no bills around there. You already had the door lock, and he told you don't have the door lock. I thought he was gonna break the door off the hinges, boy. He found that money, and he was like, "You lied to us, that? You lied to me." I said that came from a place. Yeah, he was hurt. And now you got hurt. Clarissa over there looking like. Okay. Now she look like a fool because she's trying to offend you and you actually did it. So on time of day, you mess around with a boy that he didn't want you to mess around with. They end up punching you and smacking you around. And now you come to the church and they stole money. And they stole their money. I mean, but what, what's still playing for this money? Because I know uh -huh. at first she was trying to get, um, what's the child name? Um, G, um, Gigi daughter. She probably trying to save some money to move away so with, that, with that fool. Well, we know he come back because he on the show. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yes. 
stuff. Like, okay, what, what you gonna do with this money? Or, or do you just... And then on top of that, that make him look bad. You the new pastor at the church. Hey, and your daughter. your daughter is stealing right straight out the gate. Now, we ain't gonna say nothing about the PK. Because I hate when people say PK um, kids are the worst kids. They really not. They just no. have a whole bunch of eyes on them. Calculate never got done thing they do. Yeah. Their kids ain't no worse than anybody else's kids. Let's go ahead and keep it on it. Yeah. They just ain't accountable. Yeah, because um, most kids, I used to steal when I was her age, too. So. Yeah, them kids do everything <laughs> that everybody else's kids do. It's just now, that when they do it, they got a thousand dollars. Now, I ain't steal from the church. Steal it, steal it. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't steal from the law. <laughs> but you did because everything in the earth is his. <laughs> but I got to admit, we used to go pull up at the, up at the church and drink and smoke. I'm at the church. That too. That's right in the church stuff. parking lot. Back right on up in there. That was my stuff. <laughs> but then when you go past the grave site, you turn your music down. What yeah. kind of bullshit is that? Yeah, it, it didn't make no sense. All right. So, Coochie Cross, Lord have mercy, come to find out this whole IRS bullshit don't came back into effect. Because she pulled the strings on it. Yep. She got that stuff reopened. Now we got Keisha Cole skank. Was like, hold on. You got what you wanted out of this. You, Whatever you, that was. You doing a little bit too much. Like, have you do you do you even care about your soul? <laughs> she was like, you know, I'll sleep around with T.I. I'll mess around with Bobby <laughs> Brown. You know, I'll do all them kind of things. But you messing around with the Lord right now. You yeah. didn't get your soul right. And I was like, okay, so you're not really down, down, down like we nah. think you are. And um, um, she said, I'm saved for real. Coochie Cross was like, listen. I'm saved for real today. 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 <laughs> Coochie Cross was like, um, this man killed my daddy, your father-in-law, my brother's father. For Chet. What we not gonna do? But he didn't mean it though. It was a mistake. <laughs> but he still burnt the man up. But he didn't know the man was down in the basement cleaning though. He didn't know. But he still burnt up a church. Yeah, he did. Yeah. He burnt up a whole church. Yeah. Not a piece of the church. The whole church. <laughs> the whole church. Yeah, he was, he was making a burn off into the law, I say. Oh, he got it. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't talking about their daddy. I'm talking about the church. I know. Yeah. He, he, he just threw him that, in for extra? Man, that was messed That's up. That's messed up. So, um... I guess they more mad because he, he held it from him and didn't tell him. So, Coochie Cross was like, um... I'm not letting up until, basically, I feel like he has paid the price of everything that's going down. And I and I ain't even gonna stop. We got this little little you <laughs> said this little yellow no. thing. So we get her too. Then we gonna get her too. I said, well man, no, y'all better need Sophia out of here. But I'm confused that she was sitting there and sent that lady to give freaking all uh, Gigi a fifty thousand dollar check. Is that gonna bounce? Is that a rubber check? And then it, Gigi pissing me off because she's timing on power. She just running her mouth and telling Darius everything and no none of us trust Darius. Nope. I, I don't I don't know. All right, so first lady decided okay after she done had her a night of drunkenness, <laughs> slept over there at the South Side Inn Hotel. She came to church and put you know picked the pieces back up. Told Corinne that she needed the private jet to take her to Atlanta and bring her back the same night. I said okay, well she just gonna go on a day trip. Okay, well come find out she gonna go visit her friend, the big tele evangelist. Okay. Hey. But first lady decided to stop by the office and see old Bishop Lester Wallace. <laughs> and he in there, he looked real shook of them. Uh huh. And I said, okay, it's time to face the music. What's going on? And he told her, he said, man, I made a huge mistake. I just made a really bad decision. She said, you know what? Mm -mm. Go ahead and stop you right there. I'm grateful. I am grateful that you did something like this. Because I can forgive you for this. But what I can't do is forgive myself for putting my dreams and my calling on hold to follow behind a man and the calling that he said that God gave him. And pushing your vision instead of following my own. So for that, I will have to forgive myself for. So basically she told him, adios, motherfucker, and I'm out. That sound good and everything, but I don't believe that's the whole truth. Nothing but the truth. Hope help me, God. Let me tell you. That's that woman game, man. Let me tell you. Let me tell you what the real game is, right? All here. right. 
she knew that that ninja owed the IRS one million dollars. So she know he about ready to lose all that. They gonna come in for the house, they gonna come in for the <laughs> shed. All the, little, too. all the little bit of money that's in it. No, see her name ain't on none of that stuff. Tay, his name is on all that stuff. Tell, let me tell you, when he, what he tell her? Said if you leave, you can't take nothing with you. Remember he told her that? I did tell her. Uh-huh, so that means his name is on everything. So she, she getting all the dodge before all the skit go down so that she can start rebuilding her life without the IRS tapping into her stuff because she can get that divorce done before all that stuff be like, we ain't even married no more, so you can't get nothing from me. So they gonna, they gonna do a, um, they gonna do a, um, a Nene Leaks and Greg Leaks? Yep. So they can't touch none of the Because we already know the FBI is coming to the church because we already seen that preview. Yeah, we seen it. But did we see the preview of her at some church where the hands are like this? So I don't know if that was Calvary. I think it was Calvary. I don't know what happened, so. She went up there talking to tell the evangelist and she told her how to take over the church. <laughs> Uh, we know how this works. <laughs> so you got to remember that, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, Gigi's man told her that uh, Calvary's um, names at the top of the IRS list for pastors that owe money to the IRS. Got somebody on the inside, they paying to fees to try to tell y'all. Yeah. We try to put I just hope it ain't your pastor on that list. <laughs> Straight from the <laughs> <laughs> Dirty, dirty sounds. <laughs>